Hey, watch this. Wow. <laughs> well, there she blew. Whacked me in the thumb, too. That got a lot bigger than the other one. Here's the drill press. We're gonna put it back together, but I gotta open some more packages. Let's see what this is. Actually, I'm not even sure. Oh, Ooh, I'm not sure, I'm still not sure. I ordered something the other day, but I don't think it could be here yet. Maybe it is, maybe it is. It is! Oh my goodness, let me get all this stuff out of here. Let's see what we have. I was shopping on shop. I was shopping on Etsy. And occasionally I get a buy on Etsy. This wasn't a very good photograph, but let's see what it looks like. What, what did we get? Hmm. So I got. I'm gonna need to grab my. Uh, I'm gonna need to grab my uh, laptop to show you. But I got a whole bunch of taps and dies for like thirty-two dollars or thirty-four dollars delivered. And I might have got them for less than that. They were ten dollars for the taps, ten dollars for the dies. Then the shipping was something like six fifty, I, I remember, for the taps and six fifty for the dies. Well, he sent them to me all in one package, so I was hoping I would get a shipping refund. Now I'm seeing some nice stuff in here and some not so nice stuff. Just get them all out here. And he was nice to wrap everything up so that they couldn't clink together in shipping, which is something I sent a note and asked about. Now, if you think about it, I got about $16 with shipping in these lots. <clears throat> how many good taps and dies, how many good taps do I need to get for it to be worth $16? So let's pull the, uh, what I see is possibly undesirable ones out of here. And we'll move up things that just at quick glance look like they're good. You might wonder, well, why is he pulling out some of those? Uh, ooh, this is so sharp. This is so nice. Quarter 20 pulley tap there. You can reach down in a deep spot. I don't have very many pulley taps. That's going to take me a while to get all of those. Let's see here. I swear we'll get to the drill press. We will, we will, we will. Okay, we, we, we kind of we kind of got these a little bit sorted. So here's the ones that I pulled out just at, at, at a quick look, quick glance. Looked like uh, maybe they weren't such hot taps. So I can see this shaft is ground on. But notice how short the tap is. This is a broken tap, or, or perhaps one that somebody has ground into a bottoming tap. Now remember my father telling me that if we had to we could make a bottoming tap out of some of his taps and we never ended up doing that. This tooth here is chipped. Um, but notice somebody's ground a bevel on here. So this would be a tap you would run down in a hole after you had tapped it with a standard tap 
to try to finish one or two more threads in a pocket hole, one, one you can't get the tap through. And if it's possible to regrind or resharpen a tap, uh, these look kind of interesting. In contemplating doing this, I, I never thought that it could be done to look that decent, but I can tell these are old, more worn taps that somebody's done this with. Interesting. And we got a lot of duplicates here in these cut down taps. So 5 sixteenths, uh, what's the course? 5 sixteenths, 18. These are, all of these here are 5 sixteenths, 18. And this one is a 3 eighths, 16. Now, one of the things I noticed about a lot of these taps, Butterfield. And Greenfield, there's a lot of classic, good quality things in here. I don't know what brand that is. So let's go up to the ones I didn't pull out. There's a Butterfield. That feels good and sharp. What do we have here? 5 8 24. National Fine. Bet you I don't have one of those. This is a Butterfield. One half thirteen. Another one half thirteen. One half, probably a thirteen. Uh, unknown brand. I have to look at it under magnification. Another Butterfield. Seven sixteenths, fourteen. Butterfield. Earlier Butterfield. Five six. This is a gun tap. Pushes the chip forward. And hopefully I don't already have a gun tap in this size. Doubting chrome clad. This looks like possibly... That's pretty sharp. I don't know. It's just an older one. Can't read that, but that looks like uh, 3816. So I think I did okay for 10 bucks. I mean, really, that tap there and, and any other decent tap that goes in my assortment is worth 10 bucks. I can always sell what I don't want to somebody who needs them. And believe me, there'll be somebody who needs them. And this is one of my collection goals, is to get classic Butterfield and... Uh, uh, Greenfield, you know, early machining taps, earlier stuff, tap and die stuff, and I've got a lot more taps than I do old dies, but I hope to have, like, complete Butterfield, complete Greenfield tap and die sets at some point in the future. Now, this is the first substantial uh, add to my, the number of used dies that I have. Get both of these things opened up. I did a pretty nice job of wrapping them. I even shook that box to see if it was the taps and dies, and it didn't clink. So let's sort these babies out. Probably the same. Now these are all green fields. Have one set of Greenfield dies, but they're not. Uh, I think they're all coarse. I see some fine, some fine ones in here. That's a Columbia. Wow! Look at that little hex die. I need to collect the hex die stocks. That's something I'm definitely missing.
teeny teeny stuff. Okay, so let's see what we got. 5 8 11, 5 8 11, 5 8 11, 5 8 11. Number 10 by 3 quarter. Uh, 9 16 12. This is a half 13. Half 13. This is not a green field. What is this one? This is a Lehman Archer. One half 12. Uh, 9 16 12. And one half 20. Let's see, we have a, uh, another green field. 7 16 14, 7 16 20, another 7 16 20, 3 8 16, 3 8 16, 5 16. This looks like possibly Brown and Sharp, BSW? Sheffield, East something Sheffield. This is an English tab. 5 16 something, not sure. 5 16 18. Easter Brooks, Sheffield. This is an English tab. Ah, BSW, so uh, British Standard. I have to look that up. So here is a, uh, another 5 16 18. That's a quarter 20. Wow, I can't believe that little thing's a quarter, that as big as a quarter 20. And this is a quarter 28. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 dies. This adds a lot to my collection. $10 plus shipping. So I got like $31, $32 in all this stuff. So I'm going to need an entire Kennedy toolbox just for my loose taps and dies. GTD, Greenfield Tool and Die. Quarter 28. You see the Greenfield Tool and Die logo right there. In USA, baby. Here's the Columbia. And let's look at this 7 16 20. These all look like they're in good shape. A card. Here we go. Here's our driven pulley and spline that drives the spindle. Down in here, incidentally, I hope you can see it, there's a wire snap ring, just like that one. There's a groove on top after we get this in there, that'll go on top. Make sure I don't drive that in crookedly. I want to make sure I don't drive that in Clintonly. There we go. Get this ring installed. There. Went down and sprung in. That's a nice fit. I can't feel really any play other than what tiny little bits in the bearings. Notice this 14 millimeter hole. Do you know what that's for? Oh, that's for a speed reducer that this drill press didn't come with. But it could be made easily. It would just be a shaft that fits in here, a plate comes across, shaft to be welded to the plate I presume, and then another shaft coming up with a pulley that match, it matches the motor pulley. So we would put this cone pulley on in the same orientation as the motor pulley, which would be like that. We would flip the motor pulley over and then we would go to two belts and then we could get a super slow drill press. So if I come across a uh, pulley that matches which I'm going to have to buy a pulley for something from this era, probably a lot of them are the same, uh, a motor pulley, then I can build that. Mm. 
Okay, I'm going to use the grease. Should I? <laughs> I'm really not sure. Let's look at the special woodwind grease. This is much thicker. Ooh, it's hard. Ah, oh, it's very tempting, very tempting. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, feels just like tap chapstick. This is for going on the reed of a wood one. I'm going to hang on to it. Okay. We'll grease up this spline. Wish I could dry this grease out in some way because I'd love it to be even thicker. And we'll get this down in the down in here. And we're gonna grease the rack. Oh, that's too much. There's a part of me that wants to oil this instead of grease it. And I may end up wiping the grease off where I can get to it and using uh, whey oil. That would be definitely an argument for that. There we go. Now I've got it put in with a slot here. We have a pin in there that keeps that from turning. Let's see. Let me feel that. Wow. You know, I think that's too sticky. We're going to go with uh, three and one here, which is a kind of whey oil, or a kind of uh, not whey oil, but spindle oil. A little bit of grease in there. I think that's good. So we've effectively got a mixture. A spindle oil, because that's mostly what 3 and one is, and grease. But that feels like it's moving with the right amount of resistance. Man, it's 30 year old drill press and there's like no play there. Cast iron is such a great lubricant. And these earlier uh, Thai, made in Taiwan drill presses were made so good I wish I had a Made in America drill press that was this rough to start with to restore, but I didn't. I just got excited about this one. So we did it. Okay. Ooh, almost slid out of there. Let's see, I guess I better put in my... Uh... So I removed this plated nut. I found a stainless one. I'm doing a stainless kind of uh, deal here. Well, you can't turn that in by turning the nut, dummy. Well, I almost wish I had a slightly longer, slightly longer uh, set screw there, but this will be okay. 
I'll have to get a wrench, an Allen wrench, and a spanner out of my Craftsman wrench set. Wish I had a thin nut or a slightly longer set screw. That's fine. If you've watched this series, you know the story of this drill press restoration is really the story of me drilling out and retapping these stripped out holes, making these new stems. That's really what the story was here. That was a fun repair. Now I got a lot of grease in that in the rack, so I don't have to put a whole lot here in the pinion, but I want to get it coated. That's interesting. Oh, I see. It seats out over here. I was noticing this wasn't going all the way flush. Ah, I'm lacking a part. Da 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 da. So we're just going to put a little light oil in here, just for general purposes. A little spot of grease in the hole for that. This is our depth stop. There we go. And let's see, I think that should be. I'm not sure where it should be. That's what she's supposed to look like. Beautiful. You know what? I probably should have just left that greased. I like that just fine. Okay, starting to look like a drill press. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, now we got to put this return spring on. The ball is opening another package. Here's the original one, and the little L is broken off there. So this had no return spring. This drill press had all kinds of problems. And notice it's got a hook here where it hooks into the uh, into the outer housing. I purchased this generally for a drill press of this diameter. It was about it was about I don't know four dollars delivered, five dollars, something like that. But they don't give you like the thickness of the metal or anything, and it feels kind of light. Let's see what I got. Yes, it's definitely lighter. So, if I have to order another one of these, it's going to cause this project to age a little more. Hopefully, it'll be strong enough, although I can see the material is not as thick. It'll probably be fine, because I can still wind this up. Now, you ever open a bag of insulation? I'm a little worried here. But let's take the old one out. And it's going to be trash. And I know, somebody will say, why didn't you just bend an L on there? Well, I just thought it would be fun to fix it all the way. I'm a little afraid to pull that out of there. What's 
going to happen to me. Let's put this in the vise. Hmm. I still have some aluminum jaws in here. Oh yeah, it's going to spring out. Okay. Not too bad. Let's see if we can get the new one installed. Ah, first, this has had a bolt over tightened on it. Look how dished out that is. That's supposed to be flat. I bet you we can straighten that out on the arbor press. Let's try the greener number two first. <clears throat> there we go. It was like popping the bottom of an oil can. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know that I needed to hammer on it, but, uh, but there we go. Let's see if we can get that spring installed. So I'm going to do a little bit of out loud thinking here. I can install this on the shaft. You can see how that bent tab keys it to the shaft. I gotta turn that down a lot to get it inside of here. This is uh, this is fraught with peril. So I'm just thinking out loud here. If I tighten this up until this pulls down to a smaller diameter, this uh, piece of wire will fall off of it. And I don't think I can do that without it kind of exploding out of my hands. If I pop that wire, who knows how big this is going to get. Uh, I kind of need to tighten this wire as I pull it down. I'm almost wondering if I shouldn't make a tool to do this on the lathe. Or if I shouldn't have used this uh, pinion assembly to do that while I had it apart. It's an interesting question, my friend. I wish I had a way to wind it down. Maybe that's the thing. wish I had a way to wind it down and run a chuck down at the same time and then get a wire on it, but... I don't know how I would do that. It's a little confusing. A little bit of a problem. More thinking. Alright, if I had a plate with a hole in it to fit over this and a pin in it, I could put that pin in there and turn the plate and shrink this down smaller and smaller and then possibly put another piece of wire on it to hold it at a smaller diameter. I wonder if that would work or if I could do it. More thinking. Alright, I've decided. I'm going to cut the wire and wind it into here before I go trying to make a tool. If I can't get it all in here, then I'll build a tool to wind it down. Meanwhile, meanwhile, back on the farm, hey, watch this. Wow! <laughs> well, there she blew. Whacked me in the thumb, too. So that got a lot bigger than the other one. This is the part where I go... Why did I do that?
There we go, I got it caught. Man, I got a healthy fantasy life. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. Could remove the column here, which means I could turn the handle round and round and round. I don't know how. You know, what would be neat would be to have a pin here. hook this on so I could wind it round and round and round and round hold a washer on it to tighten it up then if I could lift the washer off without it exploding I could slip this over I'd have to have a hole in here to pull the pin out of hmm there's a way there's a way let me get this column out of here the wrong way. So <laughs> look, 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 maybe I found the answer. Why won't that go? There we go. Oh, I know why it won't go, because I've got the Drill press stop lot. Here we go. Wow, I may not even need a bolt. I gotta be careful here. Okay. I can definitely wind this spring up using this. Whew. Gotta figure out how I'm going to jig it. I might have to drill a hole in this part. Put a pin in. So imagine a pin in the part. Be able to wind it up small enough and then slip this over. And I'd have to withdraw the pin. So if I was going to do that, I think I would drill it and thread it for a 440 bolt. And this has to be caught in this tab here. So I'd want to do it just outside of here. Hmm. What do you think? Now, if I start winding this up and that slips off of there, that thing could whip around there. That edge could catch me in the wrist. It could be pretty bad. I'm probably going to need to get my welding gloves out. Yes, I got stainless nuts for this too. Now that keeps it mostly contained. I wish I had a bigger washer, but that wouldn't let me slide that over it. I need a wax washer that I can melt out of there. Ooh, I could do this with a PLA washer. Because then I could heat it up, and the PLA plastic would run out. <sighs> Even so, I can't get the nut off through here. So I have to divine a way to do this, where maybe I'm using a washer and a nut, but I have to be able to take it apart once I get it wound up, and carefully slide this on and install it. I'm getting closer. Well, I have a strong feeling this isn't going to work. Feelings. Trying to 
get this hooked in here. Can't hold on to it anymore. Okay. Perhaps I need this in a vise. Hate to mess up my good paint. Perhaps I need to be holding it differently. Ill-advised and crazy this is. See how easily that comes off of there? somebody's help. Ah, about to get away from me. Unwind it, Dave. Wow. Feel like I'm close. Feel like I'm close. really be better to somehow wind this up and put a wire on it and put it in here and somehow break the wire. Mm. What a ticklish sticky thing. And I was close to getting it over the shaft too. just winding it up in my hand there's no, no way to get a wire on there mm. just experimenting More thinking to do. Okay, I think I'm on to something. I'm thinking one dimensionally or, or two dimensionally, not three dimensionally. I can still use this to load it, and I can use a washer and a nut, or at least a nut on this side. Because once I get it loaded, 
I can turn it around. It's no big deal. What do you think of that? Okay, so there's a nut, so it can't jump off of there, that way, it can hurt me in another way. Oops, trying to shoot out into my hand. <laughs> Maybe getting closer. But look, it's winding into here now. Hmm. Shot around under my hand. Oops. Oh! Wow. I whacked my finger pretty good. I think I'm getting somewhere. Might be getting close to getting myself hurt here. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. Let's run the nut in further. This was wobbling around. This is worse than a slinky. Oh. You little rat dog. Trying to hurt me. Wow, wow, wow. Ooh. What's going on? Got my glove caught. Okay, so now I got the problem. Of it. Ah. Getting it farther, but this tang is getting caught in here. And this little pushed in hook here, you gotta wind it in pretty tight to get something past that. Look at that. I think I'm getting more and more of it in there. Looks quite explosive to me. I 
I don't know how I'm going to get the last bit of it in there though. I think I screwed up. One important thing to recognize, this was bigger than this cup when I got it. Which means it was made for a larger cup. I should consider cutting this off and put on a little kick around bend in another location in order to catch the tab inside. I'm worried that if I cut that off and bend it that it will crack where I bend it. It's pretty hard stuff. But you know, wow. It's not going to take much tension on that to return the, uh, the quill. I think I better think on this overnight. Okay, I've decided I'm going to cut it. When I count across this, one, two, three, four, five, six, if I count here, I've got seven turns. I've got eight turns inside of that now, and look how much material I have on the outside. It's too much material. I'm trying to stuff 10 pounds of crap in a marble bag here. I'm just going to have to use that piece of material to make the spring that I need. Well, after a day to think about it, I realize I've got way too much material here. Too much spring. I need to cut it off. I marked it with a piece of tape. And let's see if I can get this in a position to do it. So these next few shots are me playing around with this little dinky SQ11 camera. And I had it too close. I haven't gotten a, a good idea of what the focus range is, but it, it's an opportunity to do some interesting shots. So we'll, we'll cut those very, very short. So here's the camera in approximately the same position. I do have a little electric heater running, which is the background noise you hear. But I wanted to give you a look at the quality of the image and the sound of the microphone. Now we got to bend the hook in this. Actually, I need to dress the end of it first. Let's go to the vice. Oh, it broke. My issues is I've got a really sharp point on the jaw here. That's not good for what I'm trying to do. Should be quite a bit soft. Oh yeah, look at that. So I'm pressing down against the jaw of the vise just to try to get a sharp bend. See if I can tighten it up with the vise. There we go. Now I could heat that again and requench re it and make it hard, but I don't need springiness right here. This should work perfect. Let's let's tighten it up a little bit more. Maybe I can break it. There we go. Awesome. Here's the spring with the broken tab. Here's the one we just made. Hard to say what position it should be in. Maybe I'm about the same length. About the same diameter. What do you want to bet I can get it in here now? 
There's always hope. Let's try it on the machine. I wonder if I can do this without starting it hooked. <clears throat> Let's go back around and do it backwards. Once we get it in there, I should be able to slip it around and catch it. And then I can pull it off of here and turn it over. Wait a minute, it goes this way. I believe that's it. I believe that's it. Okay, it's in there barely. Oh, it's not in there. It's out here. Uh, wait a minute. So I need to get it small enough that I can push that inside. Hang on, let me think about this. We've got it in there. That's half the battle. Look at this. I can slip it around in there. All I really got to do is push this down and then push, push this down this way and then push it in. Can I do that? Not really. Let's get the ice pick out. Wow, it takes a lot of force. Oops, 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 it's getting out of there. Okay. So now I've got it repositioned past the notch. from me. Oh, that's completely out. Let's try it again, but not have it anywhere near a notch. There, I think I did it. Oh, it ends up back in a notch. How did that happen? Again. Boy, the thing is, when I get it wound up enough to get it in there, I can just barely hold on to it. There we go, there we go, there we go. See what I've got going on now? I don't have that little hook tab in front of the notch. Should be able to push it in there now. Oh, so we're sitting on the notch here. Boy. It's tough. Hey, hey. No, it's not past it. Maybe it's time to go to the vice again. Maybe I can be gentle and make this happen. Mm. So 
as I get it in there cocked, I'm raising... Oh, maybe it's in. Maybe it's in. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now here's the problem. I've got this, the edge of this spring against that tab internally. So now is when I'm going to have to turn this until this hook comes around and gets in the tab without letting it come out of there. Let's go back to the drill press. Try to keep that thing from flying apart on me. So I have to see if I can hold this so you can see what's happening. There it's oh, it's spun around. Maybe it caught. Oh, look what happened. And I was almost there. Wow. Hmm, don't want to bend my ice pick. Probably not going to work. About to flip out. Moody bastard. Oh wow, I can squeeze it down this time. But not enough to get it in there. Well, I hate to seem so inept, but I really don't know what I'm doing. There's probably a really easy answer to this. You gotta understand, it seems like I could just push it down a little farther, but it gets coil bound in here. And when I wind it to make it uncoil bound, to make it smaller, then it slips up and catches on this lip. Maybe I can give it a ramp to go in. Look at that. Well, I wish I could hold that so you could see it. Didn't happen.
Okay. Now I have it in this position. I need to get it down in past the slot, which I think I've just about done. There we go. There we go. Now it can pass the slot. So I hope it doesn't jump out of there. Now it should slip around and catch. Actually, let's give myself more advantage here. Nice to have a big washer. Oh. In screwing around with this project, I've actually put in my shopping cart a washer with a smaller hole, a big washer like this. Come on. Oh man. I tell you what, this is a bear. I'm going to try it without the big washer. Here's one that's not as thick. Oh yeah, that'll work. Now I can get the nut started. Okay. Shouldn't be able to get out of there. Hopefully it ran around and caught. There it is. Right there. See it? I think I've licked it. She's in there all the way now, baby. There you go. Now I can set it. Set it and forget it. What a chore that was. Wow. I bought these thin nuts. This had one big locking uh, nylon nut on it. <coughs> Which, normally there's two thin jam nuts here. But I find when you're using a drill press for hand tapping, when you reach up into the top pulley and turn it, that it's nice to be able to turn this and release the spring. So, or adjust the spring so that the uh, quill is just kind of floating and not trying to retract. So I might actually replace this with a wing nut. But let's see what these two nuts look like on here. I think they're a little thick. Well, not really. The stud comes almost out to the, to the end of them. But I, I do think they're a little thick. I might machine them down on the lathe some. I think the original thin nuts were thinner than that. In fact, I know they were because I've got a drill press over here with those on. Let's go look at it. <laughs> 